Carly, I have a family history of Florida. We used to have property there and just right in the area that's going to be impacted too so I just my heart goes out to everybody over there I hope they just get out yeah I mean and a lot of the video coming out of that area shows the people getting out which is which is exactly what you need to do uh, this is an extremely powerful hurricane uh, in the Gulf of Mexico these are the the other strongest hurricanes uh, on record in terms of the the strongest wind speed now, a lot of them reached, all of these reached Category 5. However, not all of them made landfall as a Category 5 storm. So it's the lighter pink that's the Category 5. Camille was one of those that did make landfall at Cat 5. Katrina weakened as it made landfall, but still very devastating to the New Orleans area. Rita weakened as it made landfall. The Labor Day storm was a Category 5 right as it approached that region of Florida, but didn't make landfall until it reached the Big Bend area. But Milton's forecast is, is not a, a good one. It's not one you want to be looking at. It, it is it is not exciting waking up this morning. It, the devastation is going to be horrible in that part of Florida. As far as local impacts go, we are going to notice our rip current hazard continuing to be high. The, the currents out there in the Gulf of Mexico are going to be different than you're used to because this powerful Hurricane Milton is sending that ripple effect that's sending swells our direction that have more power and it is creating a stronger surge back out to sea with that rip current and then with the rip current it's it's not a perfect straight line back out to sea like a lot of the images show they can curve they can interact with the waves and there's these cross currents that set up so the gulf of mexico uh, our local beaches are hazardous uh, uh, through the next couple of days if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And minor coastal flooding is going to take place with those periods, eight to 11 seconds, that increases the rip current risk, that increases the strength, those waves are making it up to, to the coast. So I left Tuesday on here because 11.27 p.m. was high tide. I was at the beach at about 7.30 last night and the tide was already starting to come up. So that's just a comparison of where we were. Uh, tides now falling throughout the day on Wednesday. So 1.34 p.m. will be low tide but they go back up overnight so it's overnight when the tide comes up and once it comes up it's it's pretty quick with those higher waves out there as well be ready for that seven foot swells recorded at our local buoy here's the ripple or here's the wave action picking up around milton uh, we are seeing 20 to 25 foot swells that is all the water that's getting churned up that's going to then be pushed into florida creating the very hazardous storm surge so that's something to keep in mind as well. Very dangerous conditions. Uh, North Beach is included in the coastal flood advisory. That is until 7 p.m. on Thursday. The water is running a little high. There's not much beach left there. High tide is at 6 a.m. this morning at North Beach. Temperatures today across the coastal bend are going to be a tiny bit cooler. That's also going to come with a lower dew point because we are going to be south of a cold front once we get through this morning. This is the front that's helping steer Milton. Hopefully going to give it a little bit of shear that weakens it as it moves across Florida, but high pressure really just sets up across the United States and conditions are looking rather dry the next several days for pretty much everyone except Florida. Unfortunately, we're talking 10 to 14 over a foot of rain on top of everything else for us. Just sunshine in the forecast. John Thomas Carly, thank you so very much.